Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at sample spaces. So sample spaces are linked with uh, probability and they're really useful because it helps us to work out all the possible outcomes of a particular situation. So if we delve right in, that'll probably make a bit more sense. So in my first example here, I've got two fair dice and I roll them and then I multiply the scores. And this is the example of what a sample space looks like. So I've got two dice, so let's call this one dice number one, and let's call this one dice number two. So how you do it is you write out all the possible outcomes for the first dice. Well, on a dice you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the possible things for the first one. And the second dice, well, it's just another dice. So again, I have one, two, three, four, five, six as my options. Now, in this particular situation, we are multiplying the scores. So you'll notice I have this grid here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all of these together. So I could roll a 1 and a 1, so if I multiply them together, I'm going to have 1. I could have 1 and 2, and if I multiply that together, I'll have a 2. 1 and 3 would be 3, and then 4, 5, 6. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and so on. So you can fill in your uh, sample space just by doing whatever it's asked. So I'll just quickly um, finish this off, and then I'll show you how we can use it. So 12, 15, 18, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, and then 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. So there we go, there's me filling in my sample space. So what this does is, is this shows us every single possible outcome possible in this particular situation. So when we're asked questions like this, and just bear in mind when it says P here, that just means probability. So this is saying, what's the probability of scoring 18? These are all the possible outcomes. So all we do is we have a look at our table here and we find out how many 18s there are. So all I'm gonna do is just have a quick scan, take your time with this and don't make a mistake, but there's one there and there's another one there. So there's two 18s, and this is why a sample space is useful, out of how many possible outcomes? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, carry on, carry on, add them all up, and you'll notice that there are 36 possible outcomes. So the probability of scoring 18 is two out of 36. And remember, we write it as a fraction, we don't write it as a ratio. Probability is never a ratio, and it's just easier left as a fraction like so. With regards to simplifying it, if the question says to simplify, of course you can. But with probability, we tend to leave it. So another one here. What's the probability? Remember that P means probability. What's the probability of getting 20 or more? So again, we just use our uh, sample space here. And we have a look through and we find out how many numbers are 20 or more. So nothing there. There's a 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 six, seven, eight. So there are eight numbers that are 20 or more, and again, out of a total of 36 possible outcomes. Part C, what's the probability of getting less than 10? So notice with this one, it said 20 or more. This one says less than 10. So this one does not include 10, anything less than 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 for that one there. So 17 out of 36. Next one here, uh, part D says, what's the probability of getting a prime number? Always a good idea to list the prime numbers. Um, bear in mind again that one is not a prime number. So the first prime number is two. Then we have three, five, seven, 11, uh, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, and 31. So you always got a to list them just so it helps you uh, check here. So let's have a look for these prime numbers. So I've got one, two, three. Sorry, four is not, is it? One, two, three, uh, four, 
five, six. So there's six prime numbers there. So it's six out of 36 possible outcomes. Uh, same thing with here. What's the probability of getting a square number? So again, write the square numbers down. So one squared is one, two squared is four, 3 squared 9, 4 squared 16, 25 is 5 squared, and 36 is 6 squared. So let's have a look. So obviously you're going to have the 1 times 1, 2 times 2, times two. so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But don't just jump to that and think, okay, it's 6 out of 36. Be careful, because there's a, uh, still a 4 here, which is a square number, and a 4 here, which is a square number, giving you a total of 8 out of 36 so yeah don't jump to conclusions always double check all of them and count as you go so that's the, um, why a sample space is so useful because it makes it very easy to calculate these probabilities because you have every single possible outcome available to you now there's a few other ones that uh, a few other ways you can draw a sample space so just give me a second to uh, switch this over to uh, this one here. So just another two examples here just to show you how you can lay a sample space out. So in this particular example, a spinner is spun and a coin is flipped. So usually in the exam they give you a bit of a diagram of a spinner. It's usually a bit more flush than my one there, but there we go, one, two, three, four are the options on my spinner. And of course, a coin is flipped, you've got two options, heads and tails. So your sample space would look something like this. The options for the spinner are one, two, three, four, or whatever they may be. And then down the other side, we have our coin, so heads and tails. Now, of course, we're not adding or multiplying or doing anything with these. So your sample space would look quite simply like this. You'd have H for heads and one, for getting heads and then spinning a one. You get H2 for heads and, heads and spinning a two, H3 and H4, and you probably guessed it, T1. T2, T3, and T4. So again, it just helps you to work out what all the possible outcomes are. So when we're asked something like, what's the probability of getting a heads and a odd number? Well, we can look at all the heads here and look at which ones have odd numbers. So we've got H1, that's definitely an odd number, so that's one uh, outcome. Two is even, three is odd, so that's another one, so that's two in total, and then four is even. So we have two outcomes out of a possible total of eight outcomes. So the probability there is two eights. And again, you could simplify the question ask, otherwise just leave it. And again, part B, what's the probability getting tails and a factor of six? So what might be an idea is to work out the factors of six. So obviously you've got one uh, and six, or one times six, and then two times three, so two and three. So they are the factors of six. So I'm looking at the tails here. So I've got tails and one, but one is a factor, so that's good. So is two, so is three. So that's one, two, three outcomes out of the total of eight again. So it doesn't actually have to, you can have two separate things if you like. It doesn't have to be uh, added together or multiplied or subtracted or anything like that. And my last example here, two five-sided spinners are spun. So there's no diagram here. We are to assume that it's one, two, three, four, five for one spinner. And then obviously one, two, three, four, five uh, for the other spinner as well. So we're not told to add, we're not told to subtract or do anything like that. We're just told if you get one five, you win two quid. Uh, if you win, if you have the same numbers, you win three quid. So the best way to do the sample space in here is to write it like so. I can spin a one and a one. I could also spin a one and a two and a one and a three, and so on and so forth. Now what people will do with this is they'll some, somewhere down here muddle up what to do. So what's a good idea is to just fill this row in, so one and one, and then fill this row in, two, 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 and two, and then this one, just so you don't mess it up. And then obviously the fours, and then the fives. So that's doing this spinner, and then you can do uh, this spinner, which is obviously then just your ones down this one, twos down this one, threes down this one, fours, 
and 5. So again, you don't need to do anything with the two numbers. You can just write them out like so. So when we're asked, what's the probability of winning £2? Well, we win £2 if you get 1, 5. So all I'm going to do is go through my options here and go, OK, there's 1, 5 there. There's another one. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this one has two fives, so that doesn't count because that will count for this one. If you get the same numbers, you get three quid. So that would be a three quid one. So actually, we only have eight out of the 25 uh, possibilities. Where's the, where did the 25 come from? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and carry on. There's 25 possible outcomes in total. So what's the probability of winning three pounds? Well, you win three pounds if you get the same numbers. So of course, we'll have a one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. So there's one, two, three, four, five possible outcomes there. Again, out of the 25. So again, it just helps us work out the probabilities. And the final question here, are you more likely to win or lose? Well, we know the probability of winning two pounds is eight and three pounds is, is so it's eight over 25 and then obviously three pounds is five over 25 so we can count all the winning options so we'll have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so to win there are 13 out of 25 possible options of winning and therefore losing uh, there would be 12 out of 25 because these need to add up to 25 over 25 or add up to 1. Remember, all probability adds up to 1. Or again, you can use your sample space and count how many losing you have. So winning is 13 over 25, losing is 12 over 25. So are we more likely to win or lose? We are more likely to win in this game. But again, we've used our sample space to help us. So hopefully that helps, guys. Um, thanks for watching.